I'm pleased to discuss with you today uh, a new advance for the IOL Master 700 that allows a wonderful new step in your workflow, both for efficiency and for improving patient care. I want to acknowledge my co-author in this work, uh, Dr. Lee Wong. The uh, IOL Master 700 has three very unique features for its corneal measurements. The first one is telecentric keratometry in which corneal measurements are made independent of the distance from the eye. The second is total keratometry, which provides actual true measurement of the posterior corneal curvature with the swept source OCT. And the third is the use of three zone LEDs that enable the device to measure more of the cornea which then raises the question, can we make better use of these multi-zone LEDs? So this has been implemented now in the IOL Master in a very unique way, so that with no changes in your workflow, the device now measures central corneal topography, in which anterior and total axial power maps are displayed that will provide the clinician with a very quick but fairly comprehensive view of corneal irregularities. The display looks like that when uh, seen independently. And as you see on the right, now the display shows the, what the new uh, appearance will be with the B-scan, the white-to-white, -white, of course, the LEDs, and now total uh, central uh, topography. So it's integrated into the measurement. The measurement takes less than 44 seconds for both eyes. And again, it includes the biometry, telecentric keratometry, and central topography. Anterior axial power maps representing corneal power are calculated using the keratometric index to give an estimation of total corneal power. So you start with the LEDs, they undergo a modeling process, computations, and an axial power map is displayed from the LEDs. To get total axial power, representing total corneal power with refractive indices, we add the posterior corneal power from the OCT measurement of the posterior curvature to the anterior power from the LEDs, and that becomes a total axial power map. So you start with the anterior corneal power from the LEDs. The uh, swept source OCT measures the intracorneal distances. It undergoes a modeling and calculation to get a total power map display. We worked to develop scaling and hues that provide easy and intuitive corneal checks. We developed an extended color table based on ISO uh, 19880 that gives us information at a glance. It has a 34 to 54 diopter range and half diopter steps with a total of 41 colors. The default scale is 39 to 49, which is a 10 diopter range giving 21 colors. For corneas that have powers greater than 49 or less than 39, the color scale window has been extended to give more than the standard 21 colors. Green is always 44 diopters and always displayed in order to orient the clinician. So here are three representative maps. In the middle is a normal cornea, and you can see there's a moderate amount of astigmatism. Here's green, 44, and you can see the corneal map, the, the typical span of 39 to 49 covers this cornea quite adequately. On your left is a very steep cornea, and again, you can see that uh, the green is displayed on the scale at the very, near the very bottom in order, to, again, to orient the clinician and give you a very good visual clue that this is a steep cornea. On the right is a flat cornea that um, with the blue, and it's all blue, but again, by showing 44, again, it, it orients the clinician. The diameter of the analysis is always displayed, and I'm showing it here with these blue rectangles, so the clinician knows what portion of the cornea is, uh, has been measured with the three-zone LEDs. So let's look at some cases, first of regular astigmatism, and we're gonna compare central topography to a dual shine flug placido device. Here's the 700 on your left. Here's the four millimeter zone. This is the Galilei G4. And here's the nine millimeter zone. You can see that the axes are similar. There's a normal range of power. The meridians are straight. There are minimal color differences, a low amount of astigmatism. And the clinician, I believe, would make the same decision 
regarding a toric or multifocal IOL for that patient. Here is a comparison of central topography, again to the Galilei, with against the rule of stigmatism. In the central topography on your left, you can see this uh, against the rule of stigmatism. You can see it on the Galilei map. And uh, there's excellent, excellent comparability against the rule of stigmatism. The overall shape is similar to the Galilei. And again, I believe that the uh, clinician would make the same decision for a toric or multifocal IOL. So let's look at irregular pathological astigmatism. Again, comparing to the G4, here's the uh, central topography on your left, the four millimeter zone from the Galilei, and then the entire Galilei map. And what you can see very readily is the similarities with the uh, inferior steepening that's much greater than the superior steepening on all three maps. So there's great comparability. This is a regular astigmatism with inferior steepening visible on both devices, probable if not certain keratoconus, and the same decision would be made for a toric or a multifocal IOL. Here's a comparison of central topography to the Galilei with a very irregular cornea. On the central topography, you see this very interesting pattern in the center with a sort of oblique against the rule of stigmatism that drops down to inferior steepening. The Galilei has a hint of that, but I think misses some of it, but here's that central steepening again. So there's good comparability. The dominant feature is the inferior steepening that's well seen with the central topography, and the small central zone of against the rule of stigmatism seen with central topography, while not fully detected, I believe, with the placido, both indicate irregular astigmatism. And again, I think you'd make the same decision regarding the wisdom of planning a toric or multifocal IOL. Here's a cornea that looks very flat. In fact, it's a post LASIK cornea. And again, you have very good comparability. Uh, the cornea is flat. There's inferior zone is steeper than the central and the superior zones indicating superior decentration of the ablation seen very comparably with the two devices. So here is a case where the central topography actually misses some irregular pathological astigmatism, albeit subtle. This is against the rule of astigmatism seen in central topography. Here you can see with the Galilei, in the central zone, you see the against the rule astigmatism, but there's a little steepening here on the axial map. And on the instantaneous curvature map, you see this inferior steepening below, indicative of form frust, pellucid marginal degeneration. So the central topography, of course, misses that very subtle inferior steepening. Um, the central zones are similar. You might make the same decision regarding a toric eye well, but possibly a different decision on whether to use a multifocal IOL uh, based on central topography versus the Galilei. Well, how accurate or helpful is the central topography? Uh, we did a study comparing a variety of topographic maps. We asked the question, would the same decision be made with each device for selecting a premium IOL, either toric, extended depth of focus, or multifocal? We had three observers, myself and two fellows, we had no prior discussion among us to determine how we might grade these various images. We found a, a remarkable consistency of assessments for both central topography and Galilei, by which I mean the internal measurements for the central topography among the three were actually better than the central uh, than the agreement of the observers for the Galilei, showing that the central topography was very readily interpretable. When we asked the question, would you make the same decision, yes or no, for a toric, EDOF, or multifocal IOL, the three observers made the same decision 75 to 97 percent of the time for the various types of maps. This is a remarkably high level agreement, uh, a, a level of agreement, particularly when you compare it to some prior studies, which, when comparing devices, did not show agreement at this level. Well, how can we use central topography in our practice? The obvious uh, option is to use it at the first visit. You can get lens calculations. You can screen if the patient might be a candidate for a toric or multifocal. And it's wonderful for non-premium IOL cases where you not only get your biometry, but you get topography without having to do any additional steps. It's wonderful for practices without a topographer. It adds a new dimension to what they can do for their patients. It is not designed to replace topography where it's indicated or needed. 
So central topography, I think, is an exciting new innovation that's clinically useful and a wonderful practical advance for biometry. Thank you for your attention.